Hi guys, it's JB again. Um, all it is, is somebody's posted a comment on one of my videos <coughs> and it just says that they've come over from Fruity Loops and they're on Logic, so I assume they've bought a Mac unless they're on the old version of Logic. So he wants to know, without creating a new track, how do you change the LFO speed? So, quick tutorial, not just to show you that, but to show you a lot of quick ways to use Logic and better ways to do it than that because I don't use what I'm going to show you, I don't use automation to change the LFO speed because when you use automation it ruins it. If you've got clipping at the end you've got to go in and take out all your volume automation and stuff so <clears throat> not worth it to me unless you do it at the very end. So I've created this little, see here the MIDI part just created a little pattern with one of my wobbles and I'm going to show you how to make it change so right so um, spacebar will start and pause the music so there you go spacebar right <coughs> caps lock brings up a keyboard in the middle of the screen which you can see here and then, yeah, and you can play it in and record that way. It's a bit different to Fruity Loops like that. So you just press caps again. When caps is off, your keyboard is shortcuts to everything. So if I press A, this brings up what's called automation for the track you've got selected. So now you can see this bar. If we look here underneath the instrument now, there's a setting off volume so you've got four settings here read touch latch and write which means this bar this represents the volume so if you listen I'm gonna just click to put another couple of points in and it'll get quieter towards the end So you see this setting's changed automatically to read. What read means is the track reads the automation lines that you've drawn in, which is you know great. So you could draw in volume automation, <clears throat> making it higher and lower, and it'll just read it and play it how it sees it. These other settings, what touch means is if you open your uh, some this as you're playing, right? Watch and then you just change a setting, so this is the LFO rate so so touch means you can change the controller yourself and it'll record it in as you play I mean you don't have to click record well, I don't like to. I don't really use automation in this sense. Touch latch means it's like touch. You can write it in, but wherever you leave it. So if I left the volume higher than it started out before I started moving it, it'd stay at that level instead of returning to the volume it was at first. Like you can see here, that it starts about here. This is the LFO2 rate, but it starts about here and it ends there. Same. <coughs> That's what touch does. Write, never use it because it ruins everything. It does write, what it does is as you play the track it just changes all of your track automation for every track and ruins everything. So anyway, I'll have, I like having automation off, but see here, LFO2 rate, it's done that because I changed the LFO2, but if you click on it, go down to ES2, which is what plugin we've got in, and then you can just choose from a section of things, so well, I just went LFOs and then LFO2 rate, so that'll change whatever's linked to that. You can do it with anything really, global, bender range, all that shit. <clears throat> so that's how you do it like that, really nice and quick. Just press A again and it goes away and it stays. So, there you go, you've got all your automation in there. I don't like doing it like that, because like I say, when you come to the end of the track and something's wrong and you've got all this automation, you fucked. It'll ruin your track for you. So I I make that and click track while it's selected new with duplicate setting so that saved me loads of time and then if I just get this and hold the alt key
drag it down, I've got two. So then I can change the LFO speed and just delete some notes off the top one. Delete some notes off the bottom one. I'll have to delete it off the top one. Right, so now they should play with each other. So, I've just changed the pan on them so that they're coming through different speakers, give you a wider feel. And they're both doing the same thing, so I want to change this rate to something slower, really slow, so... So um, yeah, that's how you can do it. I would use another track because it, when you get more into detail, it does mess it up. What else? Since you've come over from Fruity Loops, I'm going to show you is um, <clears throat> you can use Fruity Loops at the same time. If you check out my other video, then you'll see I'll go into a, a bit of detail, so I'd check that out. But here we are, Fruity Loops open with a track that I uh, made the other day. It's not too great, but I'm going to play some of it. Right, so yeah, it goes like that. <clears throat> All I've done is I've got Windows on my Mac, so I've got Logic open on Fruity Loops. Amazing. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, going to my other video, that'll explain everything about doing this, but if you look at dubstep artists like Benga, he has an older version of Logic, but what he does is he has the Windows version of Logic, the old one, and he'll <clears throat> have Fruity Loops on one screen, Logic on the other, and he'll just say, say he wants this pattern in Logic, he'll just export that as an audio file and then drag it over into Logic as an audio track and just do it that way. So you don't have to get rid of Fruity Loops or forget anything because, like I say, I love Fruity Loops. It, it comes out with really nice analog sounding sounds, so yeah, I'd really go for it. Um, I think that that's everything, so yeah, just use automation. I'd recommend creating duplicate tracks though, and alt selecting your MIDI part to bring it across. Something else as well, if you're new to Logic, is free notes, and I've moved them all off center. This here with the Q is quantized, and it'll automatically put things to um, a pattern, so you don't have to go in and spend ages, so go down. One eighth notes, and it's just moved them back, so. If you do that, you can just save yourself a lot of time. Um, I don't really know what else to tell you. Check out all my videos uh, because there's some stuff about you know sending to reverb instead of using one reverb on everything. And yeah, I'd, uh, definitely have a look at my other videos. And if there's something that I haven't covered or you want me to go into more depth, let me know, and I'll do another video response. But yeah, um, just find your name out. If I can pronounce it. Is it O five B Smith or Smith? Thanks a lot for the comment. Um hopefully this video helps. See you later.